Give myself a tech. Tech, 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 tech. Let's kick it! Nico. So as I was saying, I thought you... I was downstairs. I thought you said you were going to be late. And... I so, was, but then, Nico, I came up with an idea. What's that? We both just watched Dogma, right? Right. We both just enjoyed Dogma. It's a great movie. It is a great movie. What I want to know, though, Nico... Yeah. How are you spending your coronacation? Well, I'm still working. You're so still working. It's not necessarily a coronacation. Really? Um, I have... I have uh, cut back. So for on those a lot of you of... that don't know, Nico's a chiropractor. Yeah, so we're still seeing patients in the office, right? Um, helping people with issues. Uh, stress is something that that right, right makes your spine more susceptible to going out of place. All right. And so during these periods of high stress, people are more susceptible to you know nervous system tension or nervous system uh, interference. Right. So that's we're still we're still yeah. open for business. My uh, my chiropractor, uh, I've been trying to get an appointment with him, but seems like he's backed up. Um, so wish you were here. I can fit you in tomorrow. Nice. <laughs> Just the drives. I'll, I'll the meet drives you in West Virginia. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so so how is that I you're in Pennsylvania obviously. I'm in North Carolina. We've got um I don't know what's what's going on in Pennsylvania for you guys right now, but like for for us basically every business that can work from home is work from home. Um as far as right. like you know, my wife is uh my wife basically works for a company out of Orlando anyways. Um, and I work for a company, uh, that, you know, what I do, I can do at home. So right. we've been, um, kind of blessed in that regard that we, we don't have to be out there in it, but my goodness, my kids summer vacation has started way too early. So are they done altogether schools in North Carolina? Or are they just doing it online? The last that well, here's the thing is this week we have um, everything has gone to online. So we're meeting with the teachers online. We're doing, um, you know, everything uh, basically through like a Skype type of chat. So, you know, right. once or twice a week, the kids all get on there and, you know, the teacher talks to them and says hey to them. And, you know, they just check in with everybody, you know, still have their school year and everything. Um, but it's weird, you know, and, and the weird thing, the weirdest thing about it is I don't think my kids understand how weird it is. Like this yeah. is not normal. No, you know, I've never seen unpre- anything. Unprecedented. Yeah. So, I mean, um, it is in this day and age, but, uh, you know, we've been, there are, we've had situations already where we've had, uh, you know, police go through the neighborhoods and make sure there's no gatherings and stuff like that, but they're not being, they're not like they're driving through just to check on everybody basically. Cause we were all, we, we, this weekend stayed home, um, you know, had neighbors over, we played darts and, you know, everybody's about our age with kids our age. And it's like if one of our kids gets sick, everybody's kids get sick. So it's not, you know, we're kind of used to that at this point. <laughs> right. And the neighborhood you live in, too, you know, you're right in the vicinity of houses. And so yeah. it's, it's really tough to stay away from people when you're in that type of situation well, and the thing outside of just being locked inside your house. Right. And you know, everybody's out walking their dogs and stuff for us. It's, I don't know what the weather's been like for you, but it's been in the mid eighties here. So everybody's been outside washing their cars and, you know, just listening to music today. There was right. like three or four, uh, you know, of the, the, the housewives, I guess you would call them. I don't know the, 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 the women of the neighborhood, we're all just kind of uh, laying out with the kids in the front yard and playing and stuff. And, 
you know, the babies are out there on blankets and stuff. It's nice. You know, I'm kind of enjoying it a little bit. Um, and I kind of feel bad for saying that because you see all of the devastation that's happened in places like Italy and stuff. And, you know, one of my neighbors is um, she's German and another one is uh, uh, Brazilian and another one is Korean. And so we're all talking about like what's going on and internationally and stuff. And it's it's pretty insane. It's like nothing I've ever seen before, you know. Right, um, right. And not only internationally, but here, here locally too. I know in Pits, in Pennsylvania, and probably there in North Carolina, a lot of small businesses have been affected. Mm. Um, people that have had to close up and don't have any way of working from right. home, or you know, have <clears throat> lost their clientele altogether. You know, tattoo shops, um, restaurants, gyms, restaurants, movie theaters. Yeah. yeah. So anyone that's affected in that regard. You know, like airlines, like said, cruise yeah, lines. Yeah, right, right, right. A lot, a lot of devastation at home, overseas. You know, the death toll keeps rising. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a no, crazy, crazy thing, man. It is a crazy thing, and I, I think that, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of hopeful that things are going to get better and things are going to turn around. Um, you know, before this happened, you know, America was like setting records for, um, economic, uh, uh, prestige and you know we were just we were doing so well and then this hit and it just it sucks you know I don't want to go into any of the politics or anything like that but you know it's just it's so crazy that the whole world is basically on pause right now as we wait for this yeah. to like but here in North Carolina it's it's strange because it's like you want to be outside you know, like this is the this is one of the most beautiful times of the year. Now, the thing that sucks is the pollen is really bad. So anybody with allergies, like my oldest son was not able to get his medication for a couple weeks because um, and he goes three times a week to get his allergy shots. And so he wasn't oh, wow. able to do that. And he's just finally oh, able to get miserable. Yeah. His eyes are basically swollen shut. You know, he's. He, the other night we had the the front porch window open so he could sit out here and you know be with the adults kind of but you know this screen right. was right there and we were like you know you should put on a puppet show <laughs> <laughs> he's just gonna sit there <laughs> but yeah i it's it's just a strange time to be alive and it's it's interesting and i hope i hope everybody's um making the best of it um, yeah. as much as, as much as we are, you know, I always like to put a positive spin on things. And, you know, the thing that's great right now is I just see much, so much community in our area and people kind of right. coming together and being like, Hey, look, you know, we're all waiting this out together. And, you know, we've been as families and stuff trying to, uh, on our block, just trying to, um, you know, order pizza from the same pizza place and stuff like that and try and help out the small businesses that that we still can um, because really those are the people that are being hit the hardest right now is, right. is the, you know, the, I don't think it's a correct term, but the essential or non-essential employees, you know, right. I think, I think it's just, it's crazy. And I'm, I'm feeling bad for those people and just wishing, wishing everybody well and hoping. And it's, it's good to see too, you know, that community we, we, I think a lot of times get caught up in, in, um, our own little world when something right. like this happens, you know, and you saw it too on nine, nine 11 or soon after nine 11, this like, right? you know, patriotism kind of come yeah. together community, like, you know, coronavirus, fuck coronavirus. We're going to beat the shit out of coronavirus. Yeah. And everybody, that's the thing that I'm seeing, you know, all over the world is everybody's trying to work together to try to put an end to this. Um, and that's really the good thing about about people and the thing that we you know sometimes you don't you don't think people are the humanity's gone but you start to see things like this and it it really is a reminder like you said uh, you know I remember the Saturday after 911 just like driving down the streets because our football game had been for that Friday night had been canceled cuz they didn't know what the hell they were going to do but that Saturday, my buddy um, picked me up, and we were driving to go get our other buddy to get to the field to go play football. And 
it was like we were driving through the streets and everybody was kind of like out and it was like it had like a it's almost like that feeling of Christmas towards the end of the year where everybody's a little bit happier, everybody's a yeah, little bit nicer, yeah. willing to help out. And you know, I see that stuff and I, I I see the things where the I don't know if you've seen the videos of Italy and shout out to the Italian people. You guys are going through some times right now that that's got to be harsh. Um but you know, seeing them, you know, kind of singing to each other, you know, in in those beautiful Italian songs and stuff, um, and right, and kind right. of you know just showing their support for their country and and uh, you know for for everybody that's going through this right now. And if you've got somebody that's going through this, you know, we're we're praying for you. We're we're thoughts and prayers, all that. You know, just hope you're doing well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I mean, there has been a couple glimmers of hope to come out of this. Um, I don't know if you've you've seen any of this, but the one glimmer of hope that everyone is agreeing on right now is that that uh, Tiger King. Oh, I have. OK, so I keep hearing about this. Yeah, and I've not I've not watched it yet. I'm really looking forward to it because. It's like every single person I know has been has been talking about this, and I and, and and that's a good thing, you know. Get your mind off of stuff for a while. Um, exactly, it could have come at a better time. It seems, you know, well, everyone's at home, everyone needs right, you know, something see, to to gather around that I'm, fireside chat. Yeah, and I'm kind of used to um, I'm kind of used to this being the time of year when I'm getting geared up for a really good movie to come out. Um, but, you know, March, April, May, and then you start to get into the summer season and stuff. But so many things have been pushed back. Uh, you know, I was really looking forward to Black Widow, Wonder Woman, uh, the new James Bond movie. Like, there's so many so many good ones um, that I've just been so excited to see that are getting pushed back. And it's just uh, – I'm more of a movies guy than a TV guy, so – uh, yeah. I I definitely um, have been affected by coronavirus. <laughs> I've I've barely gotten into it. Maybe an episode, episode and a half. I fell asleep to a couple of episodes, but that wasn't because it was boring. Right. Uh, more because I was tired. Um. So yeah. I, but everywhere, it's everywhere. Everyone's talking about it from celebrities, you know, Twitter, Facebook, all friends, you know, family. Yeah. Everybody's watching it. And that's the thing that we that I hope everybody's seeing more than anything is kind of being able to step back and kind of laugh at this situation when applicable and be able to just kind of realize that this is not the end of days. (laughs) Right. You know, um, this is this has happened over the years to several uh, civilizations you know, it happened in Athens. It happened in Rome. It happened in in uh, the Europe. It happened in America several times. You know, and and viruses they suck. You know, hopefully yeah. um, this one we can kick its ass and send it packing. Um, right. So well, it shout is a, out. It is a good time <laughs> too, opposite end of the spectrum, to realize that our volatility and our, our right. you know we're very vulnerable. Uh, as a as a society, right. um, I, I think this showed us a little bit of that, and maybe learn from this situation and be prepared. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, realistically, you want to talk about end of days? It could be over in a second. Yeah, you know, that's that's how easy it would be. So it's a good time to check back in with that as well and be like, man, right? It was coronavirus was close, but whew, yeah, we got through it. But yeah, you know, home team, everybody's together on this. You know, America's going to do America, Italy's going to do Italy. You know, UK's going to UK and everybody's got to keep on trucking, you know, and we're going to get through it. It's it's not a uh it's not a national thing. It's a it's a global thing and, you know, we right. or as as they say this too shall pass. So, Nico, now that our little PSA is over, I am uh, gonna admit it's been it's been a, a rough week. You know, we've had to kind of delay recording this episode and stuff, and keep pushing it back. You know, we were ahead in our recording time, and 
and hopefully we'll be able to get on to our next episode. But I'm going to go ahead and admit that I didn't do my homework as much as usual. That's so we're going to do yeah. we're going to do this episode a little looser. I did I did watch Dogma, um, yeah. but uh, your history with this movie. It came well, out this came out in ninety nine, just for the folks listening at home, November twelfth. Right. In ninety nine I I was uh sixteen, seventeen years old, uh very uh Catholic Italian family, and I right. re- remember my first even hearing of this movie was in church. The priest was preaching about how we shouldn't see this movie and how right. how blasphemous it was, you know, and so that was my first uh you know, exposure to this was this, this, this was some dark, sinister thing that exactly they didn't yeah. want you to see it. But as soon as I heard that, my mind as a 16 or 17 year old boy is like, as a 16 oh, wait or a 17 year old Italian boy, <laughs> right? Like, wait a Italian second, Italian Catholic boy, wait a second, why don't they want us to see it? Yeah, you know, and well, so I think that's... I, it was one, you know, I didn't see it right away, but I saw it a couple years later. I was in the Navy a couple years later and, and saw it and right. enjoyed it. So I understood why they why they would have. Right, to, right, right, right. Almost. They have to come out and say something. Well, see, here's the thing. I disagree with you on that a little bit. Yeah. I think that this movie, the central message of this movie is. It doesn't matter the the what's written you know it does it it, it, matt the there's a line that selma hayek has i think it is um where she's talking it it, it drives home the point so much it's like as far as catholicism goes like what is the point like so from a more protestant perspective i think it makes more sense to me as like what is the point of like you know there's things in there like uh, that that t- that they talk about that to me have always just been like yeah that makes sense like you know Jesus not being white you know I mean it's just like well yeah he was Jewish so it makes sense he would be darker um, you know he was in the Middle right. East right. Uh, spent some time in Egypt you know I mean it just this movie like I I look at this movie as like a it's the theology is actually pretty interesting um, and kind of the questions that it asks, yeah. you know, and I think, you know, when I saw this movie at the time, you know, I was um, I was more atheistic, agnostic kind of thing. Um, you know, there is a difference there. But I think at this point, 1999, I was in ninth grade, man, I was at the peak of being a little hellion. So this movie was right up my alley. And plus, I had seen um, Kevin Smith's other films. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see this until it came out on video um, because, you know, it was R-rated and I couldn't get anybody to go see Dogma with me. Um, but I had already seen Clerks and uh, uh, yeah, this was the th- This was the fourth, Chasing yeah. Amy. Chasing Amy. Chasing Amy, I always thought was... Uh, in the view askew movies, I always thought it was highly overrated. I always thought Mall Rats was a much better movie. I love Mall Rats. I love yeah. the clerk. Um, and so when I eventually saw this, it's you know, of course, it fell right in line with, you know, with. For I, me, I, I love these guys. Yeah. Yeah. This was this was one of Kevin Smith's. This was his like. In my opinion, this is his smartest, biggest movie. Right. You know, um, with just the characters of Jay and Silent Bob being there, you know, they bring the comedy. And obviously Smith's writing and the acting. Alan Rickman, just ridiculous in this movie. Like, such, like he plays the voice of God. Right. Who else, like, so it tells you something about Kevin Smith, like, who would play the voice of God yeah, of in, course, in my Alan movie? Rickman. Alan Rickman has a badass voice. You know, he's got right. that really recognizable, you know, that British monotone, but, like, just so good. I mean, he's he's freaking uh, the villain Snape. in Die Hard. Yeah. Yeah, Professor Snape. Also Professor Snape. He yeah, the head. sheriff of sheriff of Nottingham. Sheriff of Nottingham. We, yeah, we saw that already. Yeah, Hans Gruber and Die Hard. Hans. <laughs> um. 
So yeah, there's just there's such a ridiculous cast here. Chris Rock um, playing Rufus, the Thirteenth Apostle. Selma Hayek is Serendipity. Um, you know, obviously Kevin Smith and Jay Muse as uh, as the um, Jay and Silent Bob. Jay and Silent Bob. Uh, but the the one that shines for me, this was the movie that showed me that Matt Damon could be hilarious. He, yes. him as Loki and Ben Affleck playing Bartleby, the two angels that kind of set off, um, you know, what's going in, what's going on in the movie where they're trying to get into, uh, you know, the whole plot of the movie is George Carlin is a priest uh, or a cardinal um, who is uh, who's going to make it so that anybody that comes through the entrance of his church is going to be immediately redeemed of all their sins. And so these two angels, Bartleby and Loki, that fell, uh, you know, during the events of Paradise Lost, uh, probably, um, or the uprising against heaven and the war against heaven and hell, um, right. are trying to use this to get back into heaven. But, you know, we quickly find out that they, if they do that, they'll basically destroy existence because God's word has to be infallible. Right. Um, and the two characters are are, are amazing. Oh, you know, they are because it's hilarious. it's them it's them from Goodwill Hunting pretty much. It's like it's like them yeah as but friends. dialed up but dialed right, up right, a bit right, like, right right they were playing characters in Goodwill Hunting and this it just seems like it's the two of them just riffing off of each other and like the I bar, the bar scene in Goodwill Hunting where you get that. Um, Matt Damon, where he's just like off the top of the head, just like yeah. schooling, schooling people. Right. You get you get that like five or six times here in Dogma, where he's just yeah. like running down lists of names and places, and you know, schooling people. It's my, cool. My favorite thing, you know, when we first meet Matt Damon's character, he is, he's basically talking a nun out of religion as they're walking through an airport, which yeah. is the Pittsburgh International Airport. Yeah, this uh, which, movie shot in Pittsburgh. Yeah, one of our your uh, one of your teachers from high school is actually selling popcorn in the background, I believe. Yeah, I didn't this is see. I, I, yeah, I had forgotten what scene it was. Right. Um, so maybe it'll be worth going back through to see. Do you, what scene I, is it's it? It's in the airport, and I want to say she's selling popcorn. I didn't catch it this time, um, but yeah. usually I see her in there. Um, I never took any of her classes, but I am aware of who she is. Uh, Shout out to Lori Weimer. There it is. So uh, Loki and Bortleby, you know, when we first meet Loki, they're walking through the airport, which you could do in 1999 because they were pretty much like malls um, and just hang out. And he's talking to a nun and he's basically trying to convince the nun uh, you know, to that all religion is a lie and stuff. And then he sits down and uh, meets Bartleby there at the airport and they, you know, go back and forth. And he's like, you know, God exists. You stand in his presence. And he's like, I just like to mess with the clergy, man. So like, you get a sense right away what kind of assholes these guys are. They're just like always just screwing around with people and stuff. Um, you know, one of my favorites is when when you hear them talk about the uh, a bet they once had on which movie would be bigger, E.T. or Crush Groove, which Crush Groove was a movie um, made by uh, Run DMC, um, yeah. you know, starring Run DMC, and he sings the song after he comes out, whose house runs house. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you got Linda Fiorentino playing Bethany, um, Janine Garofalo makes a, um, a quick, uh, cameo as Liz. Um, let's see, Jason Lee plays, uh, Asriel. Um, you know, he's basically the one trying to warn Bartleby and Loki. They're going to destroy everything. Uh, yeah. You know who else was, was, uh, pegged to play that role and he was actually making it a different movie at the time. Who? Why don't you guess? Mm-hmm. For Asriel, yeah, 1999, Kevin Smith movie. Let's say mm, Will Ferrell. Nope. 
The Sandman, Adam Sandler. He was he was making Big Daddy at the time, oh. 1999. That's that's interesting. I I was right with Saturday Night Live. I was close. Yeah, yeah. Give me that exactly. much, damn it. It's yeah. the Sandman. The Sandman. You can't do that, Sandman. Uh, <laughs> Jason Mewes, Kevin Smith, obviously, like we said. Um, <laughs> uh, if you're a fan of uh, Kevin Smith's podcast, you might know his uh, his friend Scott Mosier um, plays a character named Smooching Seaman. <laughs> <laughs> and another, uh, 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 Monica Hampton plays Seaman Smoocher. <laughs> Smooching um, the Seaman, yeah. Yeah, obviously. The Seaman needs to be smooched. Um, and Ethan Suppley's in there as a voice. If you remember him from uh, My Name is Earl, he played yeah. Earl's brother, um, and he's been in a ton of other movies, but that's just what I remember him from. And of course, when we find out what God really looks like, yes, in Kevin Smith's world, God is a woman, and God is played by Alanis Morissette. <laughs> yeah, which is great. And she doesn't actually say anything. No. Well, she says, meep. Yeah. She honks but you, he, she talks through the voice of God. Yeah, uh, which is Alan Rickman. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, this movie, uh, it's 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 really interesting. You know, I don't want to go through and do the whole breakdown or whatever. You know, we're just gonna do a couple other names that were that are in there. I don't know if you saw them, but uncredited, um, Gwyneth Paltrow Gwyneth? played played a woman at the airport, and also from. Uh, uh, Impractical Jokers, Brian Quinn. Really? Yeah, Q was, <laughs> was in there. He's a man holding a movie fi- figurine in the airport. Oh, and that's nice. also uncredited. Um, but Quinn, uh, Q from the Impractical Jokers makes an appearance. Nice. So, um, yeah, you know, they've been banished to Wisconsin uh, by God and... You know, they're on their mission back. George Carlin. How did we forget him? George Carlin plays uh, Cardinal Glick. Maybe we did already you, name him. You mentioned that he played him. Yeah. And so he, um, you know, he ends up blessing everything and sends them and they're going to go back and reset everything. And it's just a comedic romp from there with some uh, interesting religious uh questions and answers and you know things like that that kind of go against the catholic dogma which is what you know but the uh the tagline on the poster that i love for this movie is get touched by an angel (laughs) with touched in quotation marks yeah with uh with a matt damon and ben affleck standing there with their angel wings on the poster um, really is a great movie. Can't recommend it highly enough. If you're if you're quarantined up, this is a good one to watch just to have a laugh. Um, I hope you enjoy it as much as we did, and I promise we'll do our homework next week. It's just things have been crazy with the homeschooling and all this stuff and trying to work from home, and I hope you understand. Yeah, We're all in this together. Still working, still working a full schedule. Um, so, yeah, we'll... we'll We'll get back at it next week. And we have uh, a good movie next week, Drowning Mona. I don't know if it's too early to jump into this, but... No, that's fine. Um, Drowning Mona, have you seen this one? I haven't. And I had, I had I, when I saw it on the list, I was like, oh, Drowning Mona, like, it doesn't even sound good. I've never even heard of it. And then I look it up. Danny fucking DeVito. I Danny can't wait to watch Danny fucking DeVito. This. Yes. I can't wait to watch. You are going to, this is a Nico ass movie. I'll tell you why. Um this movie has so many running jokes and gags in it. Like it's it's hilarious. Danny DeVito plays an amazing he's the sheriff of this town, but they go into the opening of the movie and it's like every uh everybody in this town the uh, some Yugoslavian cargo. Uh, uh, oh, it was a Yugo. Yugos were test marketed in this town, and it's just like that's just some random fact that they give you. But everybody, even the sheriff of the town or whatever, Danny DeVito drives oh, yeah. this Yugo. It's been a long time <laughs> since I've seen it, um, but this movie is it is hilarious. Bette Midler um, is in it. 
uh, let me see who else is in it. If you've got it in front of you, Nico. Yeah, Nev Campbell, Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Casey so Affleck. Different. Casey Affleck, the other Affleck. I fleckin' love uh, him. <laughs> But yeah, if you look at the movie's poster, it's got the Yugo on it with Danny DeVito um, oh, yeah, and Jamie Lee that. Curtis and Bette Midler and uh, Nev Campbell. Um, this is a movie that I just randomly saw on HBO, and it was like one of those movies I just kept catching uh, and just kept laughing at it more and more. Uh, William Fickner's in it. Um, he, uh, Will Ferrell is in it. Um, there's, there's a, it's, it's a great movie that you definitely need to watch, um, about this, uh, this group of people that the, basically the whole town hates this woman named Mona and they, you know, somebody kills her and, you know, there's this big investigation, but, uh, cannot recommend it highly enough. I'm going to see, yeah, I'm excited to see where it's, it's streaming right now. Right now it's on crackle, Sony crackle for free. Yeah. Sony crackle. Excellent. So Coming I through. don't know if you you may have to uh, you might have to download email the address. App. Yeah, give them your email address or your information. Let but them, if you let have a PlayStation, s- if you have a PlayStation, you can watch it on there um, or any streaming device, really. Yeah, it's also on all the other ones, but it's for money on those ones. Yeah, uh, but Crackle's free. The fr- <laughs> the first one's always free with the Crackle. Release the Crackle. I'm excited, man. I'm going to watch this shit tonight. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen this movie in years, I'm going to be honest with you. I probably haven't seen it since it came out um, in 2000. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's check this one out together. I think you're really going to like it, Nico. Yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait to get back here. We'll, we'll uh, get it done. Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, until next time, you know what to do. Spread the word. Spread the nerd. Spread it. Oh. And you know we Yeah, boy. Back up off this shit. Representing Cashmere one nine.